Hmm? Everybody, it's Amanda. <laughs> and Rick. It's time for our evening Bible study. Welcome. Out with it's, the old and with the new. I don't I don't know what he's tearing out of his notebook. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. And we are gonna start our Bible study shortly. Mm -hmm. We are in Psalm 18. We're gonna start at verse 28 18. and we're gonna go to the end of the chapter. Uh, hopefully, Lord willing. <laughs> but first, before we do that, we're going to give everybody time to join us in the chat. I'm going to share the links on our Facebook page and Facebook group, also called the Beals Bible Study. If you decide that you like us, you want to hang out with us, by all means, go go follow us there. And that way you'll get notified because I'm sharing the links when we're live. And you can also subscribe and click the bell here to be notified on YouTube as well. Now, YouTube doesn't always do a great job of notifying people right away, which is why we got to have this little time for everybody to show up in the chat. Um, and that's why we always encourage everybody to go to the Facebook group too. And also we are live every Saturday and Sunday night. So if you want to connect with other believers during the week, that's a great place to do it. So I'm going to share the links. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. If you're watching the replay, I highly encourage you to just move forward just a little bit straight to the Bible study if you don't want to wait while we hang out. Or you could, you know, we're going to chat for a little bit. Who knows what's going to come up there. So you can hang out with us while we do that. Either way. This is where Rick talks. I know, but you or just, doesn't. I just think it's funny because it's never hit me before. You tell the people that they can jump ahead to the Bible study uh -huh. right at the time I'm about to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you do your little speech, and well, then and then it's like I'm getting ready to t give it to my husband here, but you can skip ahead to the Bible study. Well, I just you know I feel like <laughs> people click on it and they want to you know see the Bible study yeah. if they're watching the replay, and we talk sometimes ten or like last night twenty minutes before we actually hit the Bible study. It was 1950. 20 minutes and I apologize. <laughs> but anyway, so I want to make sure to, you know, people know that they can move forward and they don't have to, you know, hang out for all the chat if they okay. want to get straight to the Bible study. So anyway, I'm so sharing the links. I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet tonight. I hope so. We we are in Psalm 18. It is located in the Psalms. I think it's right after Psalm 17. Usually that's how it works. This is the kind of commentary I think people want to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've already skipped ahead, so it wasn't that. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, I hope everyone is doing great tonight. Honestly and truly. I'm not just saying that. I don't have it written down. It was something that just came from my heart. Truly, I hope everybody's doing well tonight. What do you think? I'm glad you emphasized the truly. Yep. And and that that is that is a thing. That, that is real. Uh, I hope this is one of those days that you just want to go and write down in your journal. You know? I got my sparkle cup tonight. Well, it's actually Brianna's sparkle cup. I know, I know. She she left it in our, our vehicle one time and um she took it from the house when she got married and left, and you know, I kind of miss it. You know, I just it, it just holds the right amount of coffee for travel. Mm -hmm. And uh, she left it in her vehicle one time uh, when she was visiting, mm -hmm. and and I, I took a picture of it and I sent it to her. I said, "Look what I got. Got it back." <laughs> Kelly said, "Time for a story." <laughs> that was your story for the night. The story of the sparkle cup. Uh, it's been a neat night, kind of a quick night. Um, we had dinner and Ricky called. We haven't talked to him for a, a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. He's been busy at camp. They're training uh, staff and everything, getting ready for a busy summer. In fact, they have uh, campers coming tomorrow, I think he said. So, but it was good to talk to him. He's getting old. I was looking at him and think, man, that boy's old. It's almost, you could call him a man, maybe. He's married and all. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm not getting older. You know, people are starting to think I'm 50. I know, I'm just waiting for you to share your thing thing. But then that's something. And I, I got nothing against 50. But folks, I'm 42. Everybody seems shocked. I used to be the kid. Everybody always thought I was the kid. Every, you know, I was, I was the youngest one in the room. And now all of a sudden, uh, people are looking at me like I'm the old man. You know? Mm-hmm. 
I know it's because because uh, I'm going blonde. I got that beach look. Yeah, you do have those. I got waves. I got that blonde chin. No comment. On the other hand, I'm just waiting for you. They the, they like I said, they've already skipped ahead. They're in the Bible study now, waiting for us to get there. On the other hand, I have been getting a lot of comments on how young I look lately, <sighs> and I, it makes me feel good. I think it's the ponytail. It's a ponytail. <laughs> I should get one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh my. I, I also, you know what else I think it is though? I, I tell you what I really think it is. Because I really don't think I look younger than you. It is blonde, Kelly. <laughs> I actually think <laughs> it just depends on the light. I think what it is is when it's ladies. People are, people are always inclined to say, oh, you look so young. It's like people always, always want to say like, oh, you look like you've lost weight. It's just like something people say, you know what I mean, to ladies. But to men, I, for some reason, it's like, oh, you look older. Like that's the, you know what I mean? Like trying to be. I've had two people in the past few weeks. One happened today. The other was a few weeks ago mm -hmm. <clears throat> where I, I'm thinking nothing of it. You know how people just discuss age. I, I just mentioned today that I was 42. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the woman older than me apparently thought we were about the same age. She's got me beat by almost 20 years. And uh, <laughs> she looked at me and said, what? What? I didn't like the way she said it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like, the, you know what I mean? There was, a, there was a lot of meaning and feeling behind her. What? And I could tell, yeah. you know, I, I'm not a genius, but I could tell which way she thought I was in the spectrum. She thought I was in the older, uh, uh, you know, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a kid. Huh? I'm a kid. I'm a, I'm a kid who's matured a little. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take that maturity and study the Bible. <laughs> How long have I been saved? I mean, when you're saved, you're a babe in Christ. So I think I've been saved like what 14, 15 years or something like that. Okay. So, so I'm I'm just like a 15 year old kid. I'm a, I'm a teen. That's about right. I'm a teenager in Christ. That's about right. What do you think? Yeah. Teen in Christ. I'm a, I'm one of them teens. Well, I've been saved since I was eight, and I'm older than you. No, I'm just with an older woman. <laughs> Well, you are anyway. I, I know. I know. But the, the, I am older but, but, than him. But that makes it sound like a much He's older He's 42. Woman. I'm 44. Isn't that something? But he but will you, be 43 you, in a couple you, weeks. You wear it well. Thank you. It's the ponytail. It's the pony. Yeah. Anyway. Which, I, which I'm... Well, actually, I guess I do have a pony. Since we're one. Huh? Your pony's my pony. <laughs> Uh, isn't that the way it works? This is why I tell people to skip ahead. Well, we're, we're <laughs> one. We're one. Is that not true? What What's mine you know, is yours, what's yours is we're mine. Alive and we just huh? Mm. You, your pony's my pony. Uh, my blonde chin's your blonde chin. Yeah. Mm, no. We share everything. We, no. Okay. Psalm 18. <laughs> you wear my pony well. <laughs> Oh, stop it. I'm tired, folks. Forgive me. Psalm 18 me. is written. Oh, oh. now now I, I like to, you know, I, I like to pick a chapter apart, piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Talk about each little piece for like a half hour. Mm -hmm. My wife is being led tonight to finish this psalm, <laughs> which I think is wise considering. We've been on for four days. And we're done until next weekend. So to, to, to bring the same psalm out for yet another weekend, mm -hmm. uh, is that really necessary? We could start a fresh one on Saturday night. Uh, so so I, I am all for finishing this tonight. But to do so, you, you have suggested, she has suggested that, that instead of picking, up, picking it apart, we think of the overall idea and, and, and things, which is fine. But I'm just going to have to I'm going to have to be flexible, flexible. All right. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Quick overview. Reminder of where we've come from so far. So this is a psalm that David wrote. Um, and it's a song to the Lord when he delivered them at, or delivered him out of the hands of his enemies, specifically Saul. So 
the first part was uh, essentially a section about adoration. I mean, he just appreciated who the Lord was as his rock and his buckler and, you know, just talked about, you know, all the things that God was to him and who he is to all of us. And then um, the next section, I call it the cartoon section. It's a, this story about when he called upon the Lord and the Lord answered and, you know, God coming down from heavens on a cherub. And it's, I call it the cartoon section because it's very descriptive and you can always picture it like a cartoon in your head happening. And it's just that realistic picture. And last night we talked about a life God blesses because after David described what uh, God had actually done, he said, you know, why he was doing all of this, because I've really tried to honor him with my life and God blesses those who follow him. So tonight we're going to start at verse 28. In this last section, I'm kind of calling um, what God will do. You know, we talked about a life God blesses. Now, these are all the things that David talks about uh, that God did in his life. And it just gives you an idea of the things that God can do in your life if you have a life that God blesses. And uh, and I think it's just another piece of encouragement. So we're going to start at verse 28. I'm going to read to the end of the chapter, give you a quick overview of that, and then we'll talk about it. So Psalm 28, starting or Psalm 18, starting at verse 28. You ready? Mm-hmm. It says, for thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord, or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine hands, by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that were not that were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth. And blessed be my rock, and let the Lord, excuse me, let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou lifteth, liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. I don't know if you noticed in this last section, there's actually a lot of prophetic statements that point to Christ. So we'll probably talk about those as we yes. go through. But all of this is the idea of what God will do. Mm -hmm. And so when David is talking about it, first of all, he's talking about specifically how God blessed him in that moment, you know, the things that he did, he talked a lot about being in battle and all of the ways that the Lord strengthened him and helped him so that he could defeat his enemies and win the battle, which, you know, we all have enemies and we all have battles that we go through. And if God can help David in his battle, he can help you in your battle if you're turning to him. Right. But in addition to that, you also have this idea here that there are so many things he's David's talking about what God did in his life. David had a kind of a picture, just, I don't think he realized it, but, but the Lord was also through his wisdom, through the Holy Spirit, leading David to use these specific words that were also prophetically pointing 
to Christ. You know, there's so many things that he talks about, about his right hand and uh, his salvation and um, all the uh, the things with the strangers and the heathen being um, coming to him. All this stuff, David had no idea how that was going to come through the line of David. And yet it also was related to David in this moment. So, I mean, there's just so many things that we can point out, but ultimately what God was going to do with David, what God was doing in David's life at this time, was really preparing David for what God was going to do in his life through eternity. And so I think that's a really great thing to remember when you're facing battles, when you're facing enemies. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, if you turn to God in this moment, he can help you with those battles and enemies. But also, Mm -hmm. you know, the reason why he's going to help you is because you're his child as believers. You're his child and he has a plan for you. He's going to use you and you don't even know the full fulfillment of all the things that he wants to do with you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably bigger than you realize. So it's just something to keep in mind as we um, face difficult situations. As long as we're trusting God, we're calling out to him. He's going to help us win those battles, get through those dark times. And he's got a plan for us that's bigger than we realize. So Mm -hmm. with that being said, we can go back to 28. And I don't know where you want to start or what you want to say, but feel free. Well, leading up to what we were talking about tonight, Mm -hmm. uh, just thinking on the things that we've already said before tonight, it's through the Lord uh, that you are saved. Mm -hmm. It's through the Lord that you are able to stand. And it's through the Lord you're able to serve. You Mm -hmm. can't do any of that. Without the Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another thought, God fights for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a supernatural um, um, fighting, Mm -hmm. victory that he brings. Uh, I I I wrote down that the Lord breaks down the unbreakable wall. You know, we all have walls in our life that, that, you know, that we can't get over. Whether it's the wall of depression, the wall of anxiety, the wall, maybe there's an illness, a sickness, there, maybe there's drama, you know, drama can be a wall. There, there are things, you know, and you can't get around it, you can't get over it. The Lord breaks down the unbreakable wall, a supernatural victory. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we talk about Christ, when we talk about the cross and salvation, we have a wall when we're born, and it's a wall of sin. And we can't get around it. We can't get over it because sin is too great. And there's nothing that we can do to get rid of our sin in and of ourselves. We need help. We need a savior. The Lord Jesus Christ brings a supernatural victory. He breaks down the unbreakable wall and he forgives sin and gives you the victory over it when you put your faith in him. Okay. Um, Talking about things tonight. You're in verse 28. At the end of the verse, I, I kind of circled it, highlighted it, underlined it. Uh, my God will enlighten my darkness. I wrote beside it, God will help me see. Uh, it says in the book of Acts, when Paul got saved on the Damascus Road, it, it talks about, uh, uh, it was further in the chat, uh, further in the book of Acts, actually. Uh, Paul says this, Uh, to open their eyes, talking about salvation, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. The the thought there is that when you get saved, you know, a lost man or a lost woman is in spiritual darkness. They can't see. You know, it's a spiritual thing. They, they, They can't understand the things of God. They cannot see this world or their problems from a biblical, godly point of view or perspective they see it from the world's perspective false and and ungodliness Uh, but when you when you get saved the lights come on and your eyes are enlightened and you can see things the way the lord sees things Mm -hmm. when you look at people who are very uh honry and and unlovely Mm -hmm. you know as as a lost person you may look at them with contempt but when you become a saved person, when you trust Christ, you know, you, like Jesus, when he looked on the multitudes and he had compassion on them, you'll see people who perhaps are unlovely, perhaps have a 
a, a bad attitude. Uh, maybe that they mean to do people harm, but instead of hating them, you'll have compassion on them. Why? Because the Lord has enlightened your eyes and you see them as souls who are desperate for a savior, not as, as people who, 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 who are, are less than you. Mm -hmm. You see them as, as hey, we're all creation, mm -hmm. creations of God. He's our creator. And, and, and I need the Savior, and they need the Savior. We're all in the same uh, boat here, okay? You, you, see what, you see what I mean? This world without Christ tries to separate us, mm -hmm. you know? Our culture today, they, they want to separate us, separate us by where we live, separate us by, by gender. So many divisions. If you can even say gender now, separate us by skin color and all these kinds of things. Folks, the Lord wants to bring us together. He wants unity. He wants unity. And, and we can we can we can have different gender. We can have different skin color. We can speak a different language, live in different parts of the world. But if you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we're all joined together by that one faith in him. OK, and uh, and the Lord wants unity. And in that unity, in the midst of it is is an enlightenment. OK, the Lord enlightens the eyes. OK, Kelly said, didn't the Lord take Paul's sight for a time? Yes, he did. When I read the um, verse 28, it talks about uh, lighting a candle in the Lord and lightening the darkness. You know, I thought about how the Lord's been enlightening darkness from beginning to end, because, you know, you think about in the very beginning, the first thing he did, said was, let there be light. Right. Yep, he separated the darkness and the light. Yeah. And then then he provided in our darkness, Christ, mm -hmm. who's the light of the world. So it's just. What God does, <laughs> you know, whenever there's darkness, he brings the light. And so if there's darkness in your life, how are you going to get light? You got to go to the Lord. He's the only one who can bring it. Talking about that wall that I brought up. Mm -hmm. For by thee, I have run through a troop. You know what I picture there? And by my God, have I leaped over a wall. Go I mean, ahead. I'm sure you guys have seen probably... There's like uh, video games or even in Marvel movies, there's usually like a character, one character, and they like bang the ground and all of a sudden all these people go away, right? <laughs> like they're all these people are destroyed. And Donkey Kong. There's a lot of different things, but it's the idea when he says he's run through a troop, I'm just picturing literally him running through a troop and just like destroying them all as he goes. <laughs> That's how I picture I picture it. football. Hmm. Like running through a strong line. Yeah. So, sometimes you you know you get those 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 big old burly guys. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, they look like like four or five of me, and they're <laughs> snarling and looking all mean and on. I'm not and I'm not being mean. They do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's an intimidation yeah, factor. They they're don't. like you're not getting through this line, right? But then you know it happens in almost every football game. They give it to a, a running back. Sometimes it's a little guy. Mm -hmm. And somehow he just sure. gets right through that line. You know, like how in the world did that little guy get through that line with all those big, snarly, angry looking guys, mm -hmm. you know? He found a way. Well, you know, it's this idea, like, of course, like and I in, said, a, in a spiritual sense, the Lord provides the way for us to get through the spiritual uh, defense. Yeah. That's what I was going to uh, say. The, yeah. Because 29, he says he's run through a troop. And he's leaped over a wall, right? And I'm telling you, I picture a video game right there. He's running through the troop. He's leaping over a wall. And uh, but it says, at, at, it, he said, by thee, by the Lord. That's how he was able to do it. And then the next verse is, as for God, his way is perfect. And I think what he's saying there is just the idea that, you know, if you want to break through these wall, you know, break through this troop, if you want to get over this wall, whatever it is that you're dealing with, you got to do it God's way. And that's why he says, the word of the Lord is tried. He's a buckler to them who trust him. For who is God? Save the Lord. Who is a rock? Save our God. You know, all of that is him essentially saying, you got to do it God's way. You, he, God can do all of this great stuff, but you got to be in line with him. Mm -hmm. He rescues us. He secures us. Um, let me see. Let me see. 32. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the verse, he maketh my way perfect. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people, and I'm one of them. And that group of people, which I'm a part of, mm -hmm. sometimes we're a little obsessive. 
uh, sometimes we want things just right. Mm -hmm. And if they're not just right, we get frustrated. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is we're sinners mm -hmm. and we're imperfect. Mm -hmm. So an imperfect person can never do something perfect. Mm -hmm. So all I see are all the imperfections. And I, I want it to be right. And it's never quite like I want it to be. And it, it brings a lot of frustration. Mm -hmm. When I read this verse, I understand this, that it's the Lord yeah. that will make what I'm trying to do Good. what it needs to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and that's usually, excuse me, and I'm not trying to give you like preacher talk, but I'm being honest. It's, it's when you just let him do it through you. And, and sometimes it'll it'll turn out different than how you thought it should turn out. Mm -hmm. But like the verse says, his way, you know, it's perfect. And if you're following his way, his way becomes your way. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect way that God intended. Yes. Because it's his way. You get it. His way doesn't become your way. Your way needs to become his, his way. way. Mm -hmm. His way is perfect. And the problem that a lot of us get in is that we, 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 we want the Lord to get on our page. We already have our life planned out and that's the way we want it. Mm -hmm. And we want the Lord to understand that we already figured it out. Mm -hmm. And we want the Lord to say, okay, that's what I wanted you to do. You know, I, I'm going to make my way your way, Richard, mm -hmm. but the Lord's not, he, he's in charge. Mm -hmm. What he wants me to do is to yield to him mm. and say, Lord, you put me here for a reason and for a purpose that was decided long before I was here. Mm. So I need to get on board with that. Mm. You know, the Lord was already doing things before there was a Richard Beale. Very arrogant of Richard Beale to come on the scene and say, all right, I'm here. We're going to change the rules and we're going to do it this way. No, you see, you see the arrogance of that. I, I have to acknowledge that, hey, Lord, you've been here. You know, you had no beginning. And this creation, this little earth that you made, it's been here a long time before I came along. And, and I have really nothing to add to it. I need to just get on your page and, 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 and watch you do some things through me. And thank you for using me in your plan. You know, it's enough just to be used and be a part of God's plan. We, we want to be the plan maker, but we need to just say, no, I'm not the plan maker, but I am a part of God's plan. And that's, that's good enough. That's good. You know, one thing that you just said, which I thought was really good mm. is you, and, and I, I'm not going to say it exactly how you said it, but you mm. implied the idea that God's on our side. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're trying to make all these plans. We think we know better, but God knows best and he's on our side. And if he knows best and he's on our side, then why wouldn't we listen to him? You know what I mean? If he knows the end from the beginning. And it reminded me of, you know, raising teenagers slash adult children. Um, <laughs> how a lot of times we would try to tell them how to handle situations that we already had experience and knew how those situations were going to turn out. Mm -hmm. And we are on their side. We want them to be successful. We want them to make good decisions and mm -hmm. we would try to tell them how to handle circumstances and they wouldn't do things their own way and they'd insist on it. And they, and okay. They go about doing stuff their own way and guess what? It doesn't work out. And then after a time, <laughs> then, they, then they start thinking, well, maybe I'll try my parents way. <laughs> and then lo and behold, the parents' way is usually the best way. And then they're like, you were right. Like, well, you know, we don't want to gloat, but you know, we, we, we do that already. So, but it's like <clears throat> we've become, and, and, you know, Maureen just said the teenage years were a nightmare. And that's the thing. Like that, that part of it is very frustrating, but that's what we are to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times, you know, he has his word. He's very clear. He's like, Here's what you do. And we're like, but I want to do it this way. <laughs> we always just want to do it our own way. When God's way is right there, clear, so perfect. He's on our side. He has our best interest at heart. He has a great plan for us. If we just get on board with it, we'd probably really like it. <laughs> but it's just, you know, yielding to his way. Um, verse 33 to verse 40. It's a big group of verses. 
but it basically talks about how the Lord helped David specifically in battle, right? So he says, he maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon high places. The idea that, that when he says hind's feet, it's like deer, you know, like he's swift as a gazelle. <laughs> you know what I mean? He gave him speed. He set him up on a high place. Said he taught my hands to war. Like he literally, you know, gave him the ability to go to war. So that a bow of steel is broken in his arms. And, but I want you to know, he constantly is saying, thou hast given. You teach me. You make me. You enlarged. Right? This is all the th descriptive terms that he's saying. So he says, you've given me the shield of thy salvation. By the way, that's pointing to Christ. Thy right hand, again, Christ, hath holden me up. Thy gentleness hath made me great. All of this, he's giving God the credit for all the things that he is. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me. I, I said this the other day because that was in another one of the Psalms. It reminds me of those, um, oh, what were they? Those little toys, the rescue heroes with the big fat feet. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the idea that he made his, his feet really big so he was steady on his feet, you know? Um, so it says so that my feet did not slip. Right. Um, I pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Um, neither did I turn again till they were consumed. So he had the stamina, he had the staying power. I wounded them that weren't able to rise. They're fallen under my feet. So even the people who, you know, he's, he's gotten rid of them all. He, and the, this is why for thou hast girded with me with strength under the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose against me. So he's saying, I had all of this victory, but it all was because the Lord gave him strength for the battle. And he, the Lord subdued the enemy. It wasn't really him that has given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. All of this came from the Lord. And I just want to point out that David was able to win these battles but even though that David was the one out there fighting and doing all of these different things, David is very clear that none of this is like, he's not out there saying, I did this and I did that and I have the strength. He, he knows that every single thing that was good that came into his life was because God gave it to him. And I, you know, the story, we haven't gotten there yet of uh, Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. when he stands over his kingdom and he's like, I did this. And the Lord strikes him with um, essentially mental illness. Mm -hmm. And his his fingernails grow like claws and his hair grows long and he eats grass. And uh, the Lord is showing him that, you know, this you didn't do it. I did it. You know, he's, he's giving that humility. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is why David is a man after God's own heart, because even though the Lord gave him many, many, many things, David understands that it wasn't him that did it it was god who did it god took care of all the things and i think if you look in your own life like we um we always got to talk about how um in our life how we've managed to you know raise a family and raise kids mm -hmm. even though we were really young when we had them that's why we look so young now um as we were talking about earlier <laughs> but, so but we're very clear. It's not because we just knew everything about that. Our, our kids are okay. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not because we are like perfect parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not because we knew every single thing that we were doing. That is God's grace. And we've said this before. Anything good that comes out of those kids is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Anything that's messed up, probably our fault. Nope. No, probably definitely our fault. <laughs> but probably we weren't listening to the Lord in his ways. You know what I mean? But we really just have to acknowledge him in our lives. You know, you have to see if you don't see God working in your life, if you don't appreciate it and appreciate all the things that he's done. First of all, that's not a life God blesses. But second of all, you're going to miss out. You're really going to miss it because if you start thinking you can do it and you start trying to do things on your own, you're going to fall hard. You're going to fall awfully hard because you can't do it on your own. Mm -hmm. That's where you make a major mistake. Anything good is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we have to acknowledge that and appreciate and, and really start to see him working in our life. It'll help us draw closer to him and it will really help us to understand 
God working in our life, the plans that he has for us and how he's going to use those difficulties in our life for his glory. It's, it's, I just think this is so practical. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, just a couple highlights You're You're hitting highlights. Um, back in verse 33, it talked about uh, that he maketh my feet like hinds feet, mm -hmm. uh, setteth me upon my high places. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he puts me in a safe place, uh, a secure place. Uh, I, you know, we, we have cats on the porch. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we feed stray cats. We, 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 that's not a secret to many. Um, and sometimes these, these, these old grown cats have, have what they call kittens. And, and kittens are my favorite kind of cat. The old cats are just, they just, they're just old. You they're, know, they're, they're, they're not fun. They, they just, they, they just, they come to eat and then they lay around, you know, it's just like, yeah, you're not fun to watch, but the kittens are all over the place and everything. I mean, that's something to watch when you're drinking your coffee. I, I kind of like that anyway, but these kittens that they don't, they don't move too too. I mean, they can get around, but, but they're, they're little. And sometimes I'll want to clean the porch and I'll bring the hose and I'm, I may do that tomorrow. I bring the hose over and I hook it up and everything and I'll get up on the porch and all we have, we have like a cement porch and, and I, I'll start to spray it and I'll use the broom and I, sometimes I'll use a cleaner or something, you know, and I'll soap it up and everything. I'll spray it off and everything, clean it up. kind of deal. And, and sometimes the kittens are fascinated. And I remember we had a kitten one time and, and it was always under my feet. I wouldn't go away. All the other cats would run when I started spraying the water, but this cat would always just sit there and watch. And, uh, and after a while you spray in and the water and everything, and it would start to collect in like a little puddle before I, you know, brush it off the porch and everything. And the cat's just, the little kitten's just there and the water's like starting to go all around them and everything. And we have a bench on the porch too. And, and I, I remember it, it happened several times when I would do that. I would have to, I would have to stop what I was doing and lean back and grab this little kitten and pick her up and put her on the bench. I got her out of the puddle because she wasn't going anywhere. She's just letting the puddle get her. And I pick her out of the puddle and shake her off a bit. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and then I put her gently, on the bench. And, and, and so she'd be dry and she'd be safe kind of deal. And, and you know, the Lord does that with us. We're in this pedal, pedal, <laughs> puddle of a fallen world. Mm. And the Lord takes us out of this world. You know, I'm not talking about heaven just yet. I'm just talking about uh, living, living the vibe of the world, living the culture. You know, the, the whole world's going in this direction. Everybody's on the bandwagon of sin. And the Lord takes you out of that and he puts you on a high place uh, so, so you can walk with him on the high road, you know, and live a life that is different than the life that this world wants you to live. You, now you're living a life for the Lord. And the world doesn't understand it because your values are different. Your perspectives are different. Everything's different. The Lord makes things different. And that's a good thing. Amen. But he, he puts you on this new path and, and he, he gives you high places. You know, if, if you want to talk about heaven and everything, the Bible says in Ephesians that we're already seated together in heavenly places. Well, that's, a, that's a high place. You know, I, you know, the whole thought of it, that we're just pilgrims, pa and, you know, strangers passing through this land, that this is not our home, that we're heading for our, our, our eternal home. And that's heaven. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the Lord, ha he puts us on a high place here on earth, takes us out of this world, uh, the vibe of this world, the culture, and gives us a new uh, a purpose and a new direction on this earth. But also, spiritually speaking, when this life is over, our home is heaven. We're on the highest place. We're, we're, we're already seated together in heavenly places. Our home is, is, is with the Lord Jesus Christ. So in all that, I say this, that when you know the Lord, he puts you in a safe place. My wife has been talking to, have been talking to ladies the last couple of weeks. And some of these ladies think they can lose their salvation. Well, I understand this. My son brought this verse up tonight in John chapter 10, uh, Jesus is talking and he talks about how no man can pluck you out of the father's hand. 
okay, that when you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are in the hand of God and no one can pluck you out of the hand of God. You are secure, eternal security, once saved, always saved. If you could leave God's hand, then the Bible lied to you. And the Bible did not lie. Jesus did not lie. He said, no one can pluck you out of the hand of God. You can't even pluck yourself out of the hand of God. Because if you think you can, that shows arrogance. That shows some pride. That you think somehow you can get yourself out of the hand of God. God can, God's almighty. He can do anything he wants. And he says, when you're saved, you're his. He's got you. Okay. So, so God puts us, uh, he puts us in the high places. He puts us in a place of security where we never have to worry. We never have to stress. Many times we do because we're listening to the devil and we forget that we are secure. We are secure in Christ. We don't have to worry about the way the world is going because we're not of the world. We're living here, but we're not a part of them. We're a part of a heavenly kingdom. We're part of the family of God. Okay, and, and our home is in heaven and we are eternally secure in Jesus Christ if you are truly a born again believer tonight by faith in the new birth. So anyway, that's what I got out of that verse. Well I went all the way to 40. I know can I'll continue on, but I'm I'm just hitting the highlights. I had four highlights. Okay. Uh he teacheth my hands to war mm -hmm. uh so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Mm -hmm. Um Kelly said, can you fall out of his hand or not lose your salvation, but extra rewards? Um, I want to make sure we address that. Um, you can lose rewards. You can lose rewards. But I would not describe that as falling out of his hand. In John chapter 10, Jesus Christ is referring to being a part of God, God's family. Mm -hmm not being able to be separated from the Father. You can lose your rewards by living a life of disobedience, but you're not truly separated from the Father. Because God said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You are, you're always with the Lord. The Lord is always with you. But you can be a, a an obedient child or a disobedient child. Truly, in a family, you understand if you have an obedient child, they may get ice cream. Mm -hmm. You know, they may get to go to a, you know, a fun place on, on, on the weekend or something. But if you have a disobedient child, well, they're going to get punished. They're going to get grounded. They're going to get this. They're going to get that. Mm -hmm. You follow? And, and, and on a much more serious uh, uh, level, uh, in God's family, it's kind of like that. Okay, if you have a, 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 a child of God that lives a life of faith, faith in the Lord, well, they're, they're, they're going toward a great reward in heaven because of that life of faith. But if you're unfaithful to God, you're still his. He hasn't forsaken you. You are still in his hand mm -hmm. because it doesn't, it doesn't take you out of God's hand, but it does uh, hinder the blessing of God on your life. And I, I hope you understand there's a difference. There's being eternally saved. You're a part of God's family. You're not leaving his hand, mm -hmm. but while you're in his hand, you can still disobey, but you just can't leave it. Go ahead. I'm going to kind Perhaps of take it, say it from better. a different direction because you think about being in God's hand, but I actually think about what's in you. Mm -hmm. Because when you become a believer, the Bible is really clear that the Holy Spirit is given to you in you as a deposit mm -hmm. for your time in heaven. Right. Right. So the idea of uh, the Holy Spirit, I mean, it, it's not that you would fall out of God's hand. It's that you would have to kick the Holy Spirit <laughs> of your life and while you can grieve the bible talks about grieving the holy spirit you can make him feel sad mm -hmm. make him mourn that your relationship isn't what it should be but it never says he leaves as you said he'll never leave you or forsake you yeah and as long as you have the holy spirit as that deposit then when you are you know when the time comes that that you come to the lord he doesn't see you he sees Christ. He sees the Holy Spirit in you. And it's, it's nothing to do with what you've done. You're, what you've done or not done is out of the... He doesn't even see it. Mm -hmm. He sees himself. So it's not even an, an option. Uh, I shared a quote tonight on, on some of my social media um, from Charles Spurgeon. 
And he said, it is not your hold of Christ that saves you, but his hold of you. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say. Maureen said, I think it's a reassuring thought that God will not walk out on me. The rest is up to me, and I hope I can live up to that honor. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> Rick and I are married. That's, I always go back oh, to this. It always goes back to marriage. I do because she wants she wants to tell you how happy we are. No, it's the <laughs> the thing is is that I think people understand marriage. Right. You know what I mean? They understand I, I what think it so. is. People, and people, yeah. You know, if you've been married, <laughs> any of you, then you understand that sometimes it's challenging. But the fact is, we're committed to one another. We are walking out on each other. There might be difficult times. There might be sad times, just as much as there's happy times. But the fact is, is that there's a commitment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and as human beings, sometimes human beings fail in their commitments, but God doesn't fail in his. Mm -hmm. He never does, ever. So, you know, while some people in their relationships live in fear that the person that they're with might walk out and leave them, you don't ever have to fear that with God. Because his relationship with you was never based on how good you were. Mm -hmm. That was never part of his relationship with you. He loved you when you were his enemy. He loved you when you were a sinner. And he he died for you then. How much more now that you have a specific relationship... Will he, you know, be committed to you? He is, com- he committed himself to you already. It is done. There's nothing to say about that. There's nothing you could do about that to, to make him walk away. He's not going anywhere. And so while it's hard to kind of wrap your mind around, because when you think about earthly relationships, you often think that you could do something to drive someone else away. God is not like that. Mm-hmm. He does not go. He, he, he's love never fails. It's first Corinthians 13 never fails. So, I mean, that's, I just think the Bible is really clear over and over again that God does not, you know, leave those that he loves. It's permanent Mm -hmm. and praise the Lord for that. I think sometimes when we think, sometimes we stand in awe that God can love us that much. And I do think, I I will say that I I do think we should stand in awe. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that I I think one of the reasons that we are sometimes shocked that God loves us like that Mm -hmm. is because we try to put God sometimes in a box Mm -hmm. and we think a certain way. Mm -hmm. We see love a certain way. We see relationships a certain way. So we think that God must be like that. And we 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 sometimes forget that God is greater than we are. We we you know I'm I'm not all powerful. I can acknowledge that God is all powerful. Uh, I I don't know everything. I can acknowledge that God knows everything. But sometimes when it comes to like relationships and things, sometimes I think, well, that God will be just like me. Well, God's not like me in any other way. Mm-hmm. So so obviously God approaches relationships different. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter, what I'm saying is, is that sometimes people break their commitments, but God doesn't break his commitments. Mm-hmm. Sometimes g- people break their promises, mm-hmm. but God's promises are rock solid. They don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're saved, when you trust Christ as Savior and you call on him and he, he forgives your sins and you become his child... That's a promise that you're born again. That's a promise of God that you are saved, that you are his. God is not a promise breaker. Okay? And and we base our salvation on him and his goodness and his faithfulness, not on us. Mm-hmm. And, and many times when we think, well, somehow we could get away from God or God would leave us, that's because we don't say it, but what it is is we're basing our salvation on our goodness or our merit, our ability to keep it. Mm-hmm. You don't base your salvation on you mm-hmm. or what you can do or how you can live up to it or how you can uh, 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 keep it or grab it, hold tight of it. We're not holding on to God. He's holding on to us. Our salvation is in him. Mm-hmm. Our ad- identity is in him. It's all about him, him, him. And we need to stop saying us, us, us. 
It's all about him and his goodness. This psalm is really lifting up the Lord. That's what we're doing here tonight. We're understanding that God is good and through him we can do great things. But it, we can't do great things through him being filtered through his greatness. We can do great things. OK, but the spotlight is on him when it comes to salvation, when it comes to service, when it comes to everything and anything in the in the believer's life. It's always through the Lord because of the Lord. OK, you, you can you can be confident tonight if you're a believer that you will always be saved because he can do it. OK, he can he can save and keep a person saved. OK, uh, can, can I live the Christian life the way the Christian life ought to be lived? Yes, because he does, it, it, the same God who has the ability to save you and keep you safe can certainly help you through your day live like he wants you to live. OK, he, and, it, you know, he didn't leave us alone. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. You say, how, how can I do this? Well, because God gave us the Holy Spirit. And when we listen to the Holy Spirit, we can live a life that the Lord wants us to live. Okay? So I, I know I'm getting off on other things. But, but no, it's okay. It la ladies, ladies, to answer. you all started. Important question to answer. But go back to your points. Okay. Uh, I'll be quick because I know we're right at an hour. Um, just a couple thoughts. We're talked about, he te teacheth, verse 34, he teacheth my hands to war uh so the, the the bow of steel is broken in my arms the simple um application of that would be fighting would be war mm -hmm. uh that kind of thing but oftentimes and i'll do it tonight i'll apply it to a spiritual war mm -hmm. and and i'm thinking along the lines of soul winning in the war, the spiritual war in this world that Satan is involved in, and it's the war for lost souls. Yeah. You know, most of this world lost in darkness. They don't have Christ as Savior. And there is a spiritual battle, but whether you want to acknowledge it or not, there is. And there are a lot of people who realize that they should share their faith, mm -hmm. but they don't feel in themselves like they can mm -hmm. folks in and of ourselves we can't i don't care how good of a talker you are uh your arguments your witty commentary of the bible your this your that will never lead anybody to christ mm -hmm. Uh, yes, we need to talk, and yes, we need to explain uh, the Bible to people, and yes, we need to answer questions, mm -hmm. but that in and of itself will never affect a person's heart. There needs to be something supernatural happening, mm -hmm. and it's the Holy Spirit working with us, mm -hmm. leading people to Christ. Mm -hmm. The Lord doing something in people's hearts while we share the gospel. Yeah. Okay. But he teaches my hands to war. Lord, I can't go into this world that doesn't know you and, and they don't even want you and talk to people. I don't even talk right. I don't talk well. I have poor grammar and everything. How can I go to somebody and, and tell somebody, convince somebody that they need Christ as Savior? I can't do it. But the Lord he teacheth my hands to war. He he uses my mouth. Mm -hmm. He teaches me, you know, he, how to fight the spiritual war and lead others to him. Mm -hmm. OK, someone out there right now, you're shy and you don't feel like you could ever share your faith with someone. Well, folks, a shy person can become a bold person. The Lord can teach you to war. Mm -hmm. The Lord can teach you to go into this battle and become a very bold witness for him and tell people about him and lead others to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Lord does it time and time again, and I'm one of them. Okay, I, I, I was born, I, was, I grew up very shy, and, and, I, and never in my life would I even think I could do a live event. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, but I'm not patting myself on the back. It's all uh, uh, it's all credit to God. Yeah. He he teaches my hands to war. Okay. And say he can do the same for you. Any thoughts there? Um, I really love your comparison. I do think there's a great uh, 
uh, connection that you can make. And the idea of uh, breaking the bow, the bow is the enemy's weapon. And he's like, Rah! and he's breaking it. And I, I think that, you know, when you're talking about soul winning, a lot of times you can um, be, you know, concerned that you're going up against enemies and that's, you know, like y- you're, you're going to face, you know, the fiery darts of Satan, as it were, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? There's, there's going to be struggle and it's going to be hard, but the idea that, you know, through God, you can break all that down. You don't have to worry about that. I, there, it, there really is an important faith aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, David, this is again, David showed up for battle. He went out into battle. He did not think that he, you know, he, that he was going to win the battle as David. He just knew the Lord was, and that, that's really the story of David and Goliath, you know, the most famous one. He knew that the Lord was going to win that battle. That's why he could go up against the giant. Mm-hmm. And he knows when he goes into these battles, he's facing, he's running through a whole troop. It's mm-hmm. him against a whole bunch of men. And he's not thinking, I'm the strongest guy and I can do, you know what I mean? That That's not his attitude. That's not how it's portrayed here. He's like, the Lord's going to do it because the Lord has a plan for me. And so he shows up to the battle, he fights the battle, and he lets the Lord do it. Mm-hmm. And I will say this, if I might, and I know you have other points to make. You're fine. But David is taught, he's, he made the song about the Lord helping him win a battle. God would not be any less good if David lost this battle. The reason why David is winning this battle, and we're going to talk about it in a second, you know, there were other people who were crying that God would save them and the Lord didn't answer them. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was partially because these people were wicked and doing wickedly, but also because he had a plan for David and that involved David continuing and leading and being king. And it was part of God's eternal plan for the salvation of mankind. Mm-hmm. David had a pivotal role to play there. And so the Lord was doing all this, not because... David was like this perfect guy, although he did, you know, trust the Lord and follow him. And that's part of the reason why he was so blessed. But ultimately it was because God chose him for this role. Mm -hmm. And so God was going to do it not for David's honor and glory, but for his, the Lord's honor and glory. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, David could go out into this battle and know whether he won the battle, won the victory or whether he lost God was still good and he was still in control and he was going to win the overall victory. You know what I mean? Even if he lost this battle, he was going to win the overall victory in heaven with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, you got to really have that kind of faith. I feel like I heard something. I have to, I have to think about it in my mind. It was something about, it was like a, a boxing match. I, I heard somebody talk today about a boxing match. It's like you can't go into a boxing match thinking to yourself, you know, the other guy's bigger than me. The other, you know, you know, you're not going to win that boxing match. Mm-hmm. And I, I hate boxing, so I don't even know. But I just heard it, and it, mm-hmm. I thought it was relevant. Well, think about David and Goliath. Yeah, yeah, and the idea is, um, you have to go into the boxing match. If you're going to win, you have to put it out of your mind winning or losing. Mm-hmm. You go in and you do your job. You do as much as you can, as hard as you can, for as long as you can. <laughs> and that's also a, a quote in terms of the Christian life. And once you've done that, mm-hmm. if you win, then you win. And if you lose, well, then you know that you fought as hard as you could and you did all that you could and mm-hmm. you know that you didn't win that time. But you don't have to get caught up in it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to, the fear of it doesn't have to overtake your life. Mm-hmm. And, and that was just talking about boxing. But I think in terms of the Christian life, it's kind of the same thing. We get really wrapped up in our fear and our emotions and our stress. <laughs> and if we would just put all that aside and just show up and trust the Lord day by day, the great things that he could do with us would probably amaze us. Mm -hmm. Circus. Sometimes when I was a kid, I'd watch the circus and things like that on TV. Never went to one. I used to watch on TV. And I I remember there was a time, Phyllis Diller. She was spinning plates on, on a stick. 
Gotcha. I'm like, how in the world can she keep that plate on that stick? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll see people that spin a basketball on their finger or things like that. Or walk that that little rope. And they're like, how how can how can you you walk on a rope? Kind of thing. People they, they do like skateboards and stuff. You know, like how in the world can a can, can somebody that big uh, balance themselves on, on on a skateboard? It just makes no sense. It's called circus. And this world will look at a Christian who may have some stuff going on. Uh, all believers have something going on, whether it's the drama, work stuff, family stuff, mm -hmm. sickness, mm -hmm. uh, uh, financial things, or whatever it is. Maybe it's church stuff. Maybe it's just. Uh, 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 people treating you poor, uh, uh, bad, harshly because of your faith, you know, persecution and things. Mm -hmm. And the world will look at you and think, how can they stand? Mm -hmm. How are they standing so firm and well mm -hmm. when this world is trying to beat them up? Mm -hmm. But they're not wavering. They're truly standing strong. Mm -hmm. It's the Lord. Mm -hmm. The world will say, I don't understand it. I don't How can they have peace? When everything I'm looking at, would it would wreck my peace. Mm -hmm. But they have peace. How? Because when you know the Lord, the Lord will give you the peace which passeth all understanding. Mm -hmm. The world can't figure it out, the peace that we can have in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? I was looking at verse um, 36, thinking about, I can do all things through the Lord. Uh, thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. And the word steps there is the translation there is is for the word path. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of this. It's like you're on this high place. You're on like a little cliff, a little edge. And, you, and it looks like you may fall off. But the Lord says, you're not going to fall off. Watch this. And he he makes the path bigger. Mm -hmm. He enlarges it. Mm -hmm. So you're safe. Mm -hmm. OK. And, and that and that's what he does. The whole world's like, he's going to fall. But what they don't see is the Lord has got you up there. You got a big old path mm -hmm. and you're not going anywhere because you're safe in him. OK, uh, I'll say this. If I can make another point of salvation, if you can think of this, that he enlarges the path and it's his hand. How can you lose your salvation? His hand goes on forever and ever and ever. You couldn't walk to the end of his hand. You can't walk out of the hand of God. OK, his the, the path is enlarged under you. You're in it and you can't get away from it. OK, your feet will not slip. That's the point I want to make there. Mm -hmm. And that may be the last one. No, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Yeah, there was something else. I'm all the way to I was going to start at 41 if you're done. Yeah. You know what? I think the other thing we started getting off on so many other things. I, I, I lost I my. You lost my train of thought, but it was more a, a general thought where he's talking about the enemies and things. Mm -hmm. I, verse 37, I, I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. And I, I just want to say the Lord does bring victory. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the defeat of enemies. He helps you to fight them. He empowers you. Um, another point I wanted to make about sin and salvation is that our great enemy tonight is our own flesh. It's our own stinking flesh, our sinful nature. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gives us power over that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Which we wouldn't have without Christ. That our flesh doesn't have to overtake us, but we need to overtake our flesh through mm -hmm. the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our life. Mm -hmm. Our flesh doesn't have to win, but we can have the victory in Christ. Um I can't remember where the verse is now. Um, I can't remember where the verse is. But it's... Uh, I'd have to look it up. Hold on one second. I had it right here. Where is it? Ah, hold on. I got it. Second? No, first. First Corinthians chapter 9. In verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Okay. And, and, and the idea that Paul was saying is, is that my body's not going to win. Mm -hmm. My body's not going to beat me. My sinful nature is not going to beat me. My flesh is not going to beat me. But I keep under my body. 
I bring it into subjection. It is not ruling. My flesh is not steering the car. The Lord Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. And, and folks, most of this world lost without Christ, mm -hmm. their body, their flesh, their desires, their worldly, ungodly desires, that, that's what's steering the car. Mm -hmm. That's what's ruling the life of a lost person. Mm -hmm. Okay? But if you're saved tonight, that old sinful nature that we still have doesn't have to be our master. Mm -hmm. But like Paul said in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 9, that you can you you keep under your body, you bring it into subjection. You say, I'm not listening to my flesh. Mm -hmm. I don't want Richard Beale's desires. I want to live out God's desire for my life. Okay. And the Lord can give you the victory. We do have victory in Jesus. And folks, he does empower us to defeat our enemies. And the enemy that I'm bringing up right now is the enemy of sin, our sinful nature, and, and, and really uh, just the fact that we are a sinner. Go ahead. We're you can going, finish it up. We're going to finish this chapter. You can finish it up. <laughs> so just be patient with we're us. We're at the end of the chapter. Go or Verse Psalm. 41. No, we're 10 verses away. Verse 41 to actually, I, I actually was going to say 41 to 48. It's funny you were just talking about enemies because 41 to 48 emphasizes his deliverance from his enemies. So it says, they cried, but there was none to save them. Even of the Lord, he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people and hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. So I, I'll talk about it in a second. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. So all of this, I mean, David's talking about his deliverance from his enemies. I mean, just there at the end part, he was talking about the idea that he's delivered him. He says the violent man, you know, the, right at the first verse of this chapter, he talked about specifically Saul. Um, he says he's lifted him up against those who've risen against him. The idea that God is the one that avenged him and subdued all the people under him. He even had this whole section that talked about how he delivered him, how he uh, delivered him from the strivings of the people. He made him the head of the nation. Um, people were serving him that he didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as soon as they heard me, they obeyed me. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like that happens in my life. <laughs> and then, uh, It's true, though. Um, it says strangers submit themselves to me. Uh, you know, and the strangers fade away. And they'll be afraid out of their close. So the, they're even like trying to disappear, be afraid in their own places. Um, but the, you know, I'm, I'm no, I'm working backwards when I say this, but the whole point is, is that when he was in the battle, his enemies were crying out to God and God just said, no, he, he would not answer them. And again, partially because of their wickedness, partially because he had a plan for David that was for his glory. But um, but the idea that God was there, he knew what everybody was saying, he knew everything that was going on, and he delivered David out of his circumstances and delivered him in such a way that he ended up in leadership where the Lord had intended for him to be all along. And everybody who was like David was, he was like, these, I don't even know these people and they're serving me. You know, I walk in and they just obey me. You know, he's like, I, it doesn't even make any sense. It's got to be God. Right. And that's why I said, I, I can relate to that because, I, and maybe you can too. Maybe there's been situations that you're in that you're like, it doesn't even make sense. I don't even know what's going on here, <laughs> but, but okay. But I've, I've had that in my life where I just like, I walk in fresh and all of a sudden I'm in charge. <laughs> Like, how did this happen? <laughs> because it wasn't my intention. But here we go. So this, this happened to me many, many times. I think the Lord just made me that way. But, but you know, and, but I do recognize, because I've seen that in my own life, when that happens, I, I have to acknowledge that it's the Lord. Because I know I didn't, I'm not out there campaigning. Like, they made me president of my homeschool group. I was not out there campaigning for that job <laughs> at all. I did not 
particularly want it. <laughs> and then I ended up with it for many years. And that's just one example. But but I, it's like that. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes when the Lord really has something for you, it's like it's it's there it is. And you can't do anything about it. And David is kind of dealing with this. So, you know, David understands and what he's saying here at the end, the idea that um, God delivered him, mm-hmm. delivered him from his enemies, avenged him, subdued the people. God took care of all of the things that David was worried about. Because remember, at the beginning of the song, David was crying out to the Lord. Mm-hmm. God took care of it all. And that's why when you get to the last two verses, he says, Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. He, he recognizes God's mercy and deliverance and that God's going to do this. This is God's plan. He's promised it for his seed. But he's just, he's got nothing but thanks there because he knows it was God. From beginning to end, David was out there crying, <laughs> saying, Lord, help me. And God delivered him in such a miraculous way. And I think that's such, this is why we love the Psalms, because I think we've all been there. <laughs> we are all like, Lord, help me. And yet he, he, he just makes everything work out in a way that you couldn't have foreseen. And it always ends up being better than you thought it was. And then it's like, what can you do but give thanks? Because God's already taken care of it all. So anyway, that's how this one ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I don't really have all that much to add to that, except the Lord does give us victory. Mm-hmm. Um, let me say that in in on earth on this on this planet in this life we can have uh, disagreements with people people can oppose us in our life in all different kinds of situations and uh, the lord can bring us through that and give us victory over uh, really tough situations where people mean to do us harm um the lord can still bring victory so so don't be shy about praying for that mm-hmm. And don't be shy about leaning on the Lord during a hard time. And, of course, spiritual victories, I've already brought that up. Um, Let me say this, that all talk isn't true. Uh, Sometimes, I'll tell you, our enemies, people who oppose us and oppose God, uh, they talk a lot. And sometimes they're really loud. Sometimes they're really clever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we may shy off or, you know, kind of clam up. And, and, and feel like we can't speak and we can't stand and we can't serve because the enemy is so much louder and, and more clever and more this and more that. Uh, folks, you know, don't be intimidated by flash. Don't be intimidated by, by, by a lot of witty talk and things like that. Mm-hmm. All talk isn't truth. Mm-hmm. The Bible's truth. You just stick with the word of God and you stick with the God of the word and you will have victory uh victory comes through christ and i was just thinking of verse uh, 49 where it says therefore will i give thanks unto thee Mm -hmm. O lord among the heathen and sing praises unto thy name and i and i just immediately and i wrote in my bible the hymn of victory in jesus okay so i have to talk about victory like 10 times tonight Mm -hmm. and we do have victory in christ and we can sing praises to his name Mm -hmm. because it's through christ that we have the victory Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's all wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Okay, so if you know Christ, you have victory tonight, and it's in him. And if you don't know Christ, if you're studying about him, you're learning about him, but you haven't truly trusted him to save you, to forgive you of your sins, you haven't put your faith in him, understanding what he did for you on the cross, make tonight the night of your salvation. And truly, uh, don't just learn facts, but receive a savior and and call on Christ. He's alive tonight and his ear is open to you. Call on him. Exactly. And, And be saved tonight. And put your faith in Him and Him alone. Okay, and, and I and I am praying for your salvation tonight. If you're not saved, so I'm done. Well, hey, that's the ultimate victory. If you want to go ahead and close in prayer.
It can be done. Lord, thank you for uh, the difference that you do make in our life. Uh, there are a lot of tough things in life and a lot of uh, folks who do oppose. And, and, and there's a lot of conflict. And I, Lord, I thank you for the victory that we have in you. And I pray that we will not shy away from the battle, but I pray that we will lean on you uh, and trust that you will empower us and give us your grace to to face what is 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 coming uh, before us in this life. And Lord, I just pray that that we will submit to you and that people will see you in us, and we will behave like Christian men and women ought to. And that you will be honored and glorified in our life and our decisions. Uh, Lord, if there's someone out there tonight and they're not a believer, I pray that you will get their heart tonight. I pray that they will call on Christ to save them and that they will be truly born again. And I, I do pray for their salvation tonight in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. I think it's a really encouraging way to start the week. So I hope you guys are just lit on fire and excited about the uh, victories that God has come in your way. So come back next Saturday and we will continue the Psalm 19, which is one that I think you probably know some verses in that chapter. Do you, do you know what? Me? Yeah. Do you know any offhand? The heavens declare the glory of the Lord, and oh, the is firmament that? showeth okay. His handiwork. Yeah, that's I, one. I, I, I wasn't there's, thinking um, that was Psalm 19, but an, yeah, I know that let verse. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, what is it? Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I, I might have messed that up a little bit, but uh, yeah. Oh, wow. There are a lot of A lot verses. of great verses in, in uh, Psalm 19. I think yeah, you when, um, can enjoy it. When I, when I was in Bible college, we, we were supposed to... Um, we memorized uh, this portion, and I memorized it then, but I, I don't have it memorized now. But it's uh, from from Psalm 19. Uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Yep. The testimony of the Lord is sure, sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, mm -hmm. rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlight enlightening the eyes. That's what we yep. talked about tonight. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. You, you see, I, when you're in Bible college, you can remember that because it kind of rhymes. Uh, more, it's a psalm, so it's to be sung, so it makes sense that it would rhyme, even in English. And uh, You know we're going to do it next week. You don't have to more like more to be desired uh, <laughs> are they that than gold, yea, uh, say it, than much fine gold, sweeter also than mm -hmm. honey, and, and, and the honeycomb. And I remember in Bible college, I, I had never really had honey growing up. Mm -hmm. My mom never bought honey. We never had bees and bought, made honey or anything. We have honey. We have a lot of honey. Well, I, I know that, dear. <laughs> but my point is that is that is something that has happened in my life after marriage. Yeah. Okay. And, and I remember being um, being um, exposed to, to honey in the house and things. And honeycomb. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, at the same time that we, I was in Bible college reading this, and, and then I, I put the two together. Mm. I actually, for a time, for just a brief time, was putting honey in my coffee. I do remember that. Natural sweetener. Oh, thanks for the reminder, Kelly. Yeah, don't forget to like and comment. It does help the uh, YouTube algorithm just to kind of send this out so other people could see it. And we do want other folks to, to hear God's word. Mm -hmm. So anyway, all right, well, we're done for the evening. Come back. Like we said, next Saturday, we'll continue yes. Psalm 19. And I think it's going to be a really good time. So you guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. Good night folks. Bye.